Hey everyone and welcome to this new video. Yes, it's been a while since I started a little series on my channel and I thought, now is the perfect time for it again. I would like to retrofit Apple CarPlay in my car. It's all a little bit DIY, but I'll tell you more after the intro. Enjoy. Yes, first of all, I thought about how to implement the whole thing and found a small USB adapter for that. This is the one here and it promises to be compatible with Android. When you connect it to an Android device, you can use an app that you need to pre-install to connect an iPhone via USB, effectively running an Apple CarPlay interface on Android. Now, of course, I could have taken some old tablet, cobbled together a few USB adapters, and powered this adapter here with that. But it wouldn't have been quite as cool without a Raspberry Pi. Fortunately, I still have a Raspberry Pi 4 here, which are currently not so easy to obtain, and there is an unofficial Lineage port that allows for the installation of Android on a Raspberry Pi. Lineage, for those who are not familiar with it, is a project where people have essentially rebuilt the Android kernel and turned it into an open source operating system. Typically, this is intended for older Android devices that no longer receive updates in order to install the latest versions on them. Also to remove the Google services from Android, so anyone who wants a privacy-friendly Android on an Android-capable device is actually quite well off with Lineage. And someone has taken this operating system and prepared it for the Raspberry Pi. It's all quite simple. You download everything from the website, flash it onto an SD card, along with any other OS for the Raspberry Pi, and you already have a fully supported Android on the Raspberry Pi. Of course, controlling everything with a mouse and keyboard is not very practical, because as anyone who has used Apple CarPlay knows, it is usually controlled via a touch display. Fortunately, I was able to get one. A touch display for the Raspberry Pi is available, thankfully. It may not have the highest resolution at around 800x600, but it is relatively inexpensive, which is why I chose this display. Due to the unusual resolution, it is not directly supported by the Android port. What you need to do is delete a file on the SD card. I will show you here what the file is called. As it must be from a connected display with a resolution of 1920x1080, meaning it has to be full HD, since this display does not have that resolution. Delete the file, and then the resolution will be automatically selected. And that's basically it. Now I just had to download the APK, connect the display to the Raspberry Pi, additionally connect this adapter, then on the other side connect the lightning cable, plug in the iPhone, and Apple CarPlay works. However, how it all looks in practice, I'll show you in the next video. Because of course, this cannot really be installed in a car as it is, for that, I had to rely on my 3D printer again. So, I sat down and cobbled together a semi-professional setup, with which Apple CarPlay finally worked. Before I finish this video, I would like to talk to you about a few alternatives. Of course, this is not the only way to get Apple CarPlay into the car. On one hand, there are ready-made devices, which I will simply call tablets, that you can strap to your windshield and that also offer wireless support for Apple CarPlay. You can then connect everything to your own car radio via AUX or Bluetooth and essentially have the same solution that I put together here just without the DIY effort. Since I already had a Raspberry Pi lying around and was in the mood for a DIY project, this ended up being cheaper at the end of the day. However, you would probably be in a similar price range with such solutions given the current Raspberry Pi prices. I'll link one of those in the video description so you can check it out if you're looking for a much simpler solution. Additionally, it would also be possible to replace the car radio and install a car radio that is already equipped with Apple CarPlay. This is also a solution that I am actually considering because it is of course much simpler than having so many cables lying around here and can also be integrated much better into the car. However, you will no longer be quite as flexible with the position of the display. In this case, ultimately, you can place the display wherever you would like it by applying pressure. However, I could also imagine replacing the car radio instead. If you want to see that, feel free to write it in the comments. Damn blade. If enough feedback comes in, I might give it a try as well. Otherwise, that's it for this video. We will see you in the next video for the installation and assembly. If you have any questions about this video, feel free to leave them in the comments below. Otherwise, we'll see you in the next video. Until then, take care and goodbye.